First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. Coming up on First Updates Now, Infinite Recharge is here and week one events are in the book. We'll give the rundown of the top 25 teams as voted by you, the FRC community, and over 450 votes coming in for week one. Plus clips of the week, limitations of power cells, coronavirus, and even more coming up on the FRC Top 25. For reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds. And I'm Mike Stark. I'm Justin Montoys. And I'm Christina Tia. So we're really excited to be kicking off the 2020 FRC Top 25 here after week one. And tonight we have some fantastic giveaways as always. Um, and tonight specifically from Andy Mark and the Thrifty Bot. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome to see the first few matches of uh, Infinite Recharge get played. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's a really exciting game to watch. And uh, it's a, I feel like it's a little bit of a simpler game than we've seen in, in years past. But almost there's like the, the beauty in that simplicity. Um, pure scores are... are are really uh, succeeding well, but from different areas of the field, which is really exciting. And the end game is really awesome to watch. I was able to go down to Miami Valley in Ohio and watch it uh, live on Saturday. Their uh, last few qualification rounds in the playoffs, and it is just a really, really exciting game to watch. Um, what do you guys think? So I had limited exposure to actual competition this weekend. Uh, my wife and I went up to the Grand Canyon and then uh, Flagstaff and Sedona. So I wasn't able to get good cell service to watch a whole bunch. But I did, <laughs> when I in the middle of the Grand Canyon. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I could when I, you know, I did when I could. And uh, I just, I agree, Justin, it's a, it's a really exciting game. You just never know exactly like how it's going to play out. You know, you, can't, you kind of have some ideas of how the gameplay is going to go and, and stuff, but it, you could, you could just feel the energy even just watching the limited matches uh, that I saw. So what about Christine, uh, Tyler, what about you guys? Yeah. So I didn't make it physically to any events, but I watched <clears throat> kind of a good spread of them throughout the weekend. And I was pretty surprised at the momentum that most teams had coming into week one and like a pretty good understanding of the game well enough to not, you know, draw a ton of penalties, at least like from what I saw in new England um, and like LA North, I kept a close eye on. So, um, and Texas had a lot of good events going on this mm -hmm. weekend too. So it was, it was definitely interesting to see the um, kind of the spread of like tall versus short and yeah. specialty bots. Like I'm excited to see the role of like a specialty robot kind of play out more as the season progresses, like I, I think there were a few standouts this past weekend, but I definitely think we're going to see more as the season progresses. Yeah. One of the things, uh, you know, I, I was really looking for was uh, maybe different strategies or strategy we've seen from previous years played out. And I really saw it once uh, at the LA North Regional High Tide uh, with their lines partners tried doing some of the ball shuttling. And actually, I think their opponents tried doing it as well, too, uh, in the quarterfinals. So uh, interesting to see just a different strategies played out. Um, there are so many events going on nowadays. It is so hard to yeah. keep track of everything. Oh my like, gosh, yeah. like, I mean, <laughs> man, I have TB up with like nine events and there's still five others going. So it's like, yeah. you know, trying trying to see what's going on. It, it is really tough. There's always going to be events that get left in the crack and the bigger first grows and more, the more that's going to happen. It's just going to be a, a thing that happens. You always hear it at the top 25. Why wasn't this team on the list? Why wasn't this? Well, you got to, I don't know, play at a better event. I don't know. So, uh, I mean, but seriously, if you think about where people's bandwidth is in order to consume so much content, they want to get feedback on, you know, teams they saw or teams that they recognize, that sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, I was watching a lot of the Great Northern Regional, uh, a lot of LA North as well, too. was catching some PMW. I uh, was catching uh, a couple of them on the on the East Coast as well, too, as just, just kind of intermittently uh, switching between uh, channels on that. And, and, of course, the Texas and the Ontario events. Um, as well and I'm sure I'm missing a couple that I just kind of it's like channel changing nowadays you know it's like I feel like <laughs> yeah. I literally feel like I'm like having a clicker and just like picking through the, <laughs> yeah. all the other ones um, but the good yeah. news is uh, guys if you're not watching the blue lines make sure you do so consolidate chat room where you can chat about all the events going on and not just a single event so make sure you're watching on uh, blue lines game day because uh, this is the place to go it is the place to see uh, all of them as well mm -hmm. and I, I feel like the blue alliance is like what I wish Netflix was like, where I could just right. pull up a bunch of random things and get rid of them as I'm like annoyed with it. And just be yeah. like, oh, gosh. So I appreciate that blue lines and everybody that makes it possible. So yeah, I watch some GKC too. That's right. So, huh. <laughs> yeah, sure. so much going on. Oh, yeah. So one thing that I was pretty excited about this past weekend was um, seeing a lot of the quiet room photos that are showing up on the internet, especially Monterey had like the most epic quiet room ever. Like I just, as an East Coast person, like this is obviously not yeah. something that I would ever see at an event that mm -hmm. I would run or attend for the most part. Um, but it it was pretty awesome. Um, this year, there's been a big push from headquarters to help 
provide like planning resources a lot better um, and basically making it a requirement if the space is available or if you can make some sort of alternative space. So it seems like a lot of events have had them. If you um, are trying to find out if your event will have one, contact your uh, event chair or your regional director, or you can email Jamie Luce at First Headquarters as she's the FRC team advocate. So hopefully people are using them and benefit from them because it seems like it's kind of grown in population a lot yeah, this season. Christine, could you like go into a little more detail of like what the quiet rooms are and what they're being yeah. used for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah definitely. So the quiet rooms started, I believe, about like three years ago. Um, there was a group of students that worked on an initiative called Here For You where they wanted to make events more kind of accessible and uh, enjoyable for everybody, whether it's somebody who has um, kind of sensory needs and that could be somebody as young as like you know, an infant or toddler that's coming with their parents to the event as, you know, old as somebody like me or somebody even older. Um, and just because I think a lot of us at, at this point in the year, we've gone through build season and now we're in competition season and it's just incredibly taxing, uh, both like physically, mentally, emotionally. So just being able to remove yourself from the event and sit somewhere quiet and get away um, is really, really beneficial. Um, and the best part is like, as somebody who is responsible for a lot of students and responsible like when I'm planning an event, having a designated space that's monitored is like key. Mm -hmm. Because so many times like, you don't want to tell a kid like, no, you can't go take a break real quick and wander off to some hallway. Cause like as somebody that plans events, like I can't have people wandering around a venue. Um, but like, it's, it's nice that there's a designate, designated space um, for people that know that they need it or may not realize that they need it until they actually do. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, very cool. It's really great to see how much traction it has been getting um, these last couple of years and then uh, more so this year. And, and like you said, the real push from, from headquarters as well. So that's really great to see. Um, so something we should also uh, talk about and mention, too, is uh, the COVID-19 virus or coronavirus, as a lot of people are calling it. Uh, there's been a lot of impact going on. Uh, and don't worry, we'll be getting top 25 in just a little bit. But uh, this is really important to talk about that. There's there's a lot of talk going on, a lot of speculation going on, a lot of things going on. Uh, even first putting out uh, an official uh, note uh, today to volunteers uh, as well, too, uh, talking about the COVID-19 uh, virus and just saying, uh, you know, making sure you're following good practices and principles for things. Uh, if you haven't heard already, you know, China has postponed their events. Taiwan now has actually uh, postponed their event. Sorry, Glenn and the other Hawaiian teams who probably paid about thirty, forty thousand dollars to fly out to find out their events been postponed, uh, you know, a few days before. I'm sure that's quite frustrating. Uh, they go through, but you know, obviously, you want to keep people safe with that. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, been hearing that from Israel that students may not be allowed to travel internationally. Uh, and uh, first, also send out a note to event organizers to discourage event attendees from shaking hands, high fives, encouraging the bump elbows uh, as well, too. So, you know, some of you uh, may know that uh, Mike is actually a nursing instructor and a registered nurse. So we thought it might be a good idea to maybe get some input from Mike uh, on, you know, on what this is. Get somebody who, who is actually, Dr. You know, Stark. Yeah. 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 So we got to watch the doctor part, right? <laughs> but, but Mike, uh, I do want to get you in on this. Uh, just Professor talk about general, you know, best practices, what's going on with, with this and how it might impact us as well. Yeah. So um, obviously this is kind of something that I'm exposed to seeing. You know, just I'm, you know, part of different nurse groups and stuff like that. So I've seen a lot of information out there. I just pulled a, just a couple and um, just a little bit of information from a couple sources, um, as we do in the medical field. As obviously, like, you know, don't take, you know, see, you know, your state, local, federal government guidelines, all that stuff. Like, don't just take my my word or what I'm saying, you know, to be true. I mean, I got whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so. <clears throat> I pulled this from the CDC. It says, for most American public who are unlikely to be exposed to the virus, the immediate uh, health risk uh, for coronavirus or the COVID-19 is considered low. And even in people in communities where ongoing community spread with the virus that causes COVID-19 has been reported as elevated, and then that's th you're still relatively low risk of exposure. John Hopkins says that um, there's approximate, or so far, COVID-19 has like 30, coming up on 3,200 deaths reported worldwide, seven in the, in the U.S. as of today. Um, the flu 
flu deaths for the year can get up to like 650,000 worldwide, 12,000 to 61,000 in the U.S. per year. That's just the flu. And obviously, the COVID-19 is different than the flu. Uh, it has a lot of similar symptoms as the flu. Um, there's no vaccine yet for for COVID-19. They are working on it, and um, I've seen a couple like a couple sources that are, are they're really really close to it, and they've actually sent it out to be. Um, um, like verify that it actually is a vaccine. Um, but you know, we've seen this, we've seen this a lot. We've seen anthrax, West Nile, SARS, bird flu, Ebola. I, I saw the Disney measles. I don't r particularly remember that, but that must've been something a little while back. Zika, et cetera. Like all this, this stuff happens. This comes up a lot. Um, and you know, a lot of the sickness um, really affects um, the really young and the really old. And those that are in medical terms called immunocompromised. So those that can't fight infection by themselves. So, um, you know, those that have cancer are getting um, chemo treatments, those who have maybe just had or were on antibiotics where that kills all your good and bad bacteria um, to, you know, get rid of some of those, um, some of the things going on, then you just can't fight something new that comes along. So um, I worked in pediatrics and this time of year is really awful for, for the flu. There's things called uh, RSV and terovirus. All this stuff really comes during the winter for a variety of re reasons, but it always gets better in the spring and into the summer months. So, um, as always, just wash your hands. Be precautionary, as you always should be. Uh, when you think about those high five lines, and when people go through, like you know, you could be giving it to somebody, and then who knows how many people after you um, could be exposed to, to anything, really. You know, um, you always hear about, you know, they did have this the coronavirus on the uh, one of those cruise ships, but you always hear about like the the stomach bug that goes around the, the cruise ships. Like, just be precautionary, as you always would. That's how I'm, you know, treating it by, by myself. And as always, just heed to your local state and national organizations for what is best for your area. So it really stinks, you know, that we have had to postpone um, some, you know, the Chinese and uh, the Taiwan um, regionals and uh, the things with Israel and, you know, just going forward, it really stinks, um, but better be safe than sorry. And just as we learn more about this. Oh, and the other thing I just um, saw is a lot of the, a lot of these cases may be, it may be underreported too, like, um, some of the mild cases that, that you think you might just have some flu or common cold may actually have been like coronavirus and then they just had gotten over it. Um, so some of those statistics are just under underreported of um, just kind of how well it's doing. But sorry to get all like medical on you, but um, that is kind of in my wheelhouse. So I don't know if you guys have anything else to add on all that. No, Professor Mike, we appreciate your input on uh, all that. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. So while we move into our next spot, we're going to uh, give a big thank you to our, our friends at Stryker for sponsoring uh, this show. Uh, Stryker, guys, uh, awesome company that has stepped up. And really, they've stepped up for a big reason. They have people who are in first, who work at Stryker right now, who have awesome jobs, who get paid a butt ton of money, and who actually get to keep doing first freely. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you can't just skip work every day to do first, but uh, if you know some of the people that, that work for Stryker that do first, they really do support you in doing that. So if you're looking for a fantastic career uh, that supports you being in first, uh, internships, they'll cover your housing, they pay really well for it, careers, no matter where you are, intro career, later on, they have careers all around the world, headquartered in Kalamazoo, Michigan, but all around the world you can get things. Uh, go check out their Strikers Careers blog, or you can find out uh, more about how they support FIRST at careers.strykr.com forward slash FIRST. And thanks a lot to Stryker uh, for keeping fun, loud, live, independent, because they're super cool with us doing what we do. And that's mm -hmm. a big thing when we bring on sponsors is that we want sponsors that are going to, uh, we know are going to benefit the FIRST community, but then are also going to let us keep doing what we do and not say, thou shall say this and thou shall do it this way. <laughs> um, so that's that's why we really do like Stryker, because they're like, you know what, you guys do what you do. Uh, we, we just love, uh, we love FIRST and we love what you guys do for FIRST. So so big thanks to Stryker uh, for all their support uh, here, especially on the FRC Top 25. All right. So I think we're ready for the FRC Top 25. Uh, I want to thank everyone that voted. I just couldn't believe Tower had kind of uh, opened the voting and then very soon after had told us that we had already like very quickly reached over 100 voters. And uh, Tower, do you remember the number last year you had said week one we had like 170 or something? I, I think week one was 280. Uh, last year yeah. yeah so i mean so we're pretty much double this this that year that is just that is incredible less, participation yeah. from yeah. You know, from everyone and we thank you for voting we you know one of the complaints we always got when uh at the beginning of the show like 2011 when we first started this was like oh this list isn't very accurate at the time we would get like 30 40 votes <laughs> yeah, and right. we always say like vote we need more people to vote like the more people that vote we think the more you know somewhat accurate the list uh might end up being so you know just thank you for everyone um who voted and if you're interested in voting um or 
vote for the teams you think should be in the top 25 each week. Make sure you check out our Discord, our Facebook page, Chief Defy, or the FRC subreddit. Lots of ways to get that information. Voting is open from 4 p.m. Eastern Sunday through 4 p.m. Eastern Monday. So make sure you get your selections in on time. Um, and then for anyone who's new, doesn't know what the FRC Top 25 is, uh, this is just supposed to be kind of a fun discussion creating list um, to celebrate the great teams that competed each week. You know, back in the day, we used to do a Top 25 list for the whole season. So, you know, we start with our initial 25 and then teams would move up and down over the course of the season. But, you know, we kind of got rid of that um, a few years ago and said, you know what, each week we're going to have a new list. It was just a way to celebrate even more teams and talk about more teams and bring awareness. So, you know, the, the powerhouse teams do a great job getting a lot of, um, you know, accolades on their own. But we feel like we bring exposure to a lot of teams and regions that might not otherwise uh, get the coverage that they deserve. And lastly, just a great opportunity to get everybody together each week to talk about kind of how the competition se season is playing out, all the things that are going on in first. And um, it's just been a, a great uh, a great thing to, to keep going. And we're excited to be back for another year. Um, so please keep in mind, and this is super important, what well, we could talk more about each of the teams on the list. We want to respect your time, everyone's time. You know, we don't, we don't want to go to 11, 1130 um, or later. So we mean no disrespect to any teams. And don't take the length of the discussion about your team on the list as any indication that we feel a certain way. So don't be like, oh, well, they didn't talk about us for very long or nobody added on anything about our team. They must not like us. It's not like that. Sometimes, you know, we just kind of go with the flow a little bit. Sometimes we just got to keep going on in the show. So um, if, if you... If you want to hear more about each of the teams, make sure you check out the region recaps, which specifies some of the teams that are in the top 25, which takes place prior to the show on Mondays. And then hopefully, as you just tuned in immediately prior to the show um, on Tuesdays. So that's kind of a quick recap of the top 25. Um, so, Mike, what can you tell us about uh, something you kind of started last year uh, with the clips of the week? Yeah, that sounds good, Justin. It's crazy to believe that this is going into our 10th year of FRC top 25. That's nuts. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> what did you say? I said we're all old. Yeah, we yeah, are. We are. <laughs> so, uh, so close to the week, yeah, we started it kind of last year, and it really just took off. It seemed to be um, just kind of a way to, as Tyler said earlier, like there's just so many events that are going on. It's just hard to catch like the ins and the outs of each event. So um, Clips of the Week was is a way for you to submit um, clips, and I say clips, not whole matches, <laughs> of um, of some things, some exciting things that may have happened at, at your regional district event. Um, so you can submit those with your top 25 voting. You can also submit them on our social media um, <clears throat> or in our Discord in the FRC Clips of the Week um, channel itself and yeah that'll come up later i think we're going to do it at the in our break in between our sixth and our fifth team mm -hmm. um and you'll see it then but it's just kind of a great way to kind of celebrate each week and um and it's each week's going to be a little different it depends on what kind of clips come in some are like funny things some are um, really exciting robot things some you know are just random clips you know people saying different things <laughs> you'll kind of see that later but um yeah it's it's been a lot of fun so uh, we hope you guys enjoy this week, and uh, just yeah, feel free to s submit those um, each week um, by by the deadline as well. So, um, one of the other things you're going to see in the top 25, we did bring back uh, Elo uh, once again. Um, so that's going to show in conjunction with it. That won't affect the rankings at all, but it'll kind of show you where that list is. If you're not familiar with Elo, you can ex exclamation Elo. Uh, but uh, something I do want to note: um, Caleb Sykes is one who provides us this list. Uh, every single week. So thank you so much to him for doing so. He's a statistics master. Uh, but something, uh, just a note from him for this week in particular, he says that uh, the ratings are preliminary. Uh, they're based on winning margins uh, found in week zero event. Uh, and then once he updates week one uh, winning margins, uh, they're going to change a bit. Uh, so starting next week, all ratings will be official. Uh, and also the note that uh, ELO is cumulative. Uh, so the ratings come roughly from half a team's performance in week one and half from the start of their season rating as well, too. So a lot of rookies and stuff might not be as high because it takes some time as well, too. Uh, so that's ELO. So keep that in mind as we go through. One other thing I want to address, address real quick. There was somebody in chat uh, that said only the popular teams make the FRC top 25. Um, so something I, I need to know. If you are popular, do you have a better chance again in the FRC Top 25? Yeah, probably, because you're better positioned to know. You know what also makes you popular? Winning. Uh, more than yeah. once, by the way. You win one event, don't expect to be up there right away, unless all of a sudden you're making waves. On the other hand, are there a couple teams on this FRC Top 25 list, in my opinion, that shouldn't be? Absolutely, and I will call them out as we go through. <laughs> uh, but, but that's just how it is. It's 450 aggregate votes, guys. So, I mean, is that represented the entire community? No, but is everybody voting from pretty much all areas uh, that are affected by the FRC Top 25? Yes. Um, so 
take it as it is. You can whine and complain all you want about things. Uh, but tell you what, we care that people are talking about the teams and hopefully uh, showing some good ones. And we'll post the top 40 afterwards. And you can yeah. ask about rankings after, after that as well, too. And Justin, what's your favorite question after that? What people say is just popularity. What, what do we always ask people? Did, Did they you vote? vote? <laughs> yeah, they right. say no. <laughs> yeah. But I'll say, and I, you know, I feel like I'm, I've been doing this for uh, a number of years now, almost six, 16 years, and I know a lot of FRC teams. Every week there is a team that is on the list or close to the list, or this list brings to my attention a team I had never heard of before. Um, and that's yeah. kind of, for me, that's what it's all about, yeah. bringing, bringing exposure and awareness to these great teams that um, otherwise maybe wouldn't have a voice or, you know, get kind of lost in the – the spotlight of the the powerhouse teams but, real, real quick how do you vote somebody yep. else really easy answer for that there are multiple places all fun social <laughs> the fun discord chief delphi here in the chat in the blue lines chat all these places are the link is being listed for that from 4 p.m sunday until 4 p.m uh monday eastern time on that so we didn't move it up an hour by the way just so i have a little more time to process uh, for the recast yep. but there are many places for you to go uh find it and uh, i can't really think of many more uh, even the FRC Discord uh, will post it for us as well, too. So maybe FRC Reddit might be the only place I, I don't remember sometimes to post, but um, it, it's it's everywhere. So if you need help, just join our Discord, discord.gd forward slash first updates now. There it is. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.